Welcome to the September 2015 Park City Market Talk webinar. I'm Ron Wilstein, a broker at Keller Williams Luxury Properties Worldwide in Park City. And I'm Doug Olmstead, Sellers Property Consultant on the Wilstein team. Thank you very much for joining us today. All right, we've got a lot to cover. Park City this past month has been in the news and we're going to uh, bring four things to your attention. All good things about Park City. We will talk about what happens to real estate when the stock market drops. That's uh, fresh on everybody's mind, and uh, we've been getting a lot of questions around that. And then, of course, we will give you an update on the Park City real estate market, uh, discussing which properties are selling homes, condos, and lots, and where we're going with prices. So that will be covered as well. Go over our lightning flash facts. Um, this will be quick facts about all the neighborhoods as far as homes and condominiums, what's selling and uh, how quickly. Yep. And then finally, we want to cover um, the $50 million renovation in Park City. Uh, give you an update where things are at. Uh, things are definitely improving and coming, um, coming together. Snow will be falling soon and they need to come together. <laughs> so let's first turn our attention to Park City being in the news over the past uh, month. Doug, tell us what's been happening. <laughs> Lots have been happening. So. If you read Condé Nast Traveler, or familiar with that, um, great uh, magazine, and they polled their readers, and they came up with the 2015 friendliest and unfriendliest cities in the U.S. Um, we don't need to go into the most unfriendliest, I don't no. think, cities, but if uh, you've been to Park City, have visited, or you live here, it's no surprise that uh, Park City did win number one spot. Yes. Yeah, that's great. Um, they had comments such as, um, great uh, small town with big presence, um, people, the servers, uh, wait staff, everybody was friendly in the winter, even in the peak of Sundance, everybody was great, just a great place to come. And if you're a mountain biker, um, near and dear to my heart, um, the International Mountain Biking Association, or IMBA, um, reevaluated all of their rankings and reconfirmed that Park City is gold level status, their highest level, with over 450 miles of just world-class trail, right accessible from town. It's pretty fantastic. Um, with the different organizations, the Mountain Trails Foundation, which is the nonprofit organization that actually builds and maintains the trails, uh, Park City Mountain and Deer Valley, um, different government entities as well, um, put together a budget of over $1 million, and that has been that way every year for the past 10 years. So wow. there's, some, there's some capital investment into uh, our great trail, so it's awesome. And then uh, Blooming Business came out with their 20 richest small towns in America. And interestingly enough, ski resorts dominated the top rankings and particularly Park City. Uh, Park City actually came in number one. Uh, but just for clarification, if you go to Blooming Business, it's actually referred to as Summit Park, Utah. Now, we happen to have a subdivision called Summit Park, but according to the government stats, they look at the uh, zip code 84098, which is our Snyderville Basin, and they happen to call it Summit Park. So they happen to be wrong, but that's what it's referring to. But the good news is we're number one, we're the richest small town in America. This uh, chart here shows you that uh, the medium, estimated medium household income, 83,336, with uh, second place at 74,000. 456. So that's very positive. It says that the medium home value is 485,700. We of course know that's not right and we'll give you stats later in this webinar to show you that. Uh, it's also worth noting in the number eight stat uh, position, Heber City came in. So our nearby uh, small town also ranked very high on the uh, small town uh, richest uh, statistics. And then of course the unofficial networks ranked Park City as number two best nightlife uh, for mountain communities and resorts. You can see that gal dancing on the uh, piano, I think that is. And I'm convinced Jeremy is somewhere in that crowd, although I haven't found him yet. Uh, but Park City rated high in uh, activity for nightlife, which is great. Of course, Sundance Film Festival brings a lot of activity. Uh, but I do remember back, uh, I've been here 26 years. That's when we first right. came here for night activity, you stuck it in a brown paper bag. You went to the <laughs> liquor store, bought your... Uh, alcohol and brought it to the restaurants. That's the only way you could do it. So we have come a long way to uh, dancing girls on pianos. <laughs> so yay for Park City. Fun place. And I think, what do we got here? We've got 
the friendliest mountain bikers who have a lot of money and like to party at night. That's <laughs> what those like four a, things say. Sounds like a good ski town. <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right. Uh, what happened in the real estate market when the stock market drops? That, of course, is uh, whether you like it or not on everyone's mind because the market has definitely been making a correction. And uh, people wonder, what's the relationship between stock market and real estate? So let's talk about it. Uh, people's overall confidence in the economy, of course, drops when the stock market takes a drop. Uh, it may be a short drop. It may not be that significant, but people feel that pain and that pressure and many of them kind of freak out. Uh, buyers financial resources, let's get that out of your way here. Uh, buyers financial resources decline, sometimes reducing uh, their buying options and in some instances taking them out of the market entirely. So when people's capital that's tied up into the stock market drops, sometimes that does negatively impact their ability to invest in real estate. Uh, on the other side of that coin, however, it's worth noting that investors often choose to move out of stocks and into real estate. They feel too much pressure, too much anxiety, and they want something to be a much safer and, and feel better as an investment. So they see real estate as a more stable investment and one that they can use. You can't go on your vacation and pull out your stock portfolio and expect to stay in it. Uh, you can, however, if you own a condo or a second home in Park City, you can enjoy the investment benefit of your real estate and come on vacations and enjoy it. So that's what people turn to. And so declining the stock market actually helps us in real estate. Uh, real estate is tangible. Stocks are intangible. And after taking a beating in the stock market, uh, investors often prefer that tangible investment instead. Investors know that real estate is not as liquid and easy to sell as stocks. They're willing to uh, live with that. Uh, but the great thing about real estate is that real estate has a consistent history of growing and appreciating value over time. In fact, there's never been a 10-year period in real estate in America where values have not increased. Now, I'm not saying that there aren't times where values drop. There are times, but there's never been a recorded time that you could buy any time in real estate, hold for 10 years and not have a gain. Sometimes a huge gain, sometimes a modest gain, but no one's losing money in real estate in the long haul. So a drop in the stock market often leads investors to purchase real estate as long as the drop is not so severe that it takes the investor out of the real estate market due to a lack of capital. And a Park City uh, real estate market update. Let's look at what's selling. Uh, 1,454 sales in Park City over the past 12 months. Um, like Ron said, we're hopping. That's homes, condos, and vacant lands combined, all brokerages combined, and that's up 9% or 120 sales. Now, when we turn to uh, this graph, we're breaking it down by homes, condominiums, and lots. We're looking back 12 months from September 2014 to August 2015. That's in the red, and the gold uh, bars represents the same 12-month period the year before, so we're comparing year over year here. You notice that homes, number of home sales are up by 7%, climbing from 505 to 539. Condos up impressively 20%, rising from 605 to 723. Uh, but in this instance, lots is actually down by 14% from 224 sales to 192. And uh, a lot of what drives that is frankly, lack of inventory of lots to purchase. And if we look at home sales, this is chart is broken out between the Park City limits and out in the Snyderville Basin. Um, in Park City, up 11% from 169 sales to 187. And in Snyderville Basin, up 5% from 336 to 352 sales. Now this graph shows us condominium activity. In Park City, it's up 11% from 348 transactions to 388. So 40 more uh, sales this year compared to last year. Snyderville Basin climbed from 257 all the way up to 335. That's a 30% increase in the number of purchases. And we look at lot sales. Um, again, in Park City, there's just not a whole lot of uh, land for sale or available. So down 24% from 42 sales to 32 sales. And out in Snyderville Basin, where inventory is also uh, down, uh, but that's down 12% from 182 to 160 sales. This graph here is a fun one for us to present. Average time on the market of closed sales. Uh, you notice that it's 110 days. That's fast. 
And this is one graph that you want the chart to be going down 125 days the year before, which is also quite fast. Um, but it shows the strength of our marketplace. When you price your property correctly as a seller, you're going to move it. Price it too high, it's going to be more than 110 days, that's for sure. What's happening with prices? Let's take a look at that, starting with uh, uh, single-family homes. These are medium sold prices for that same time period, September 2014 to August 2015 in red. Uh, in the city limits, Park City is pretty level. It's actually down by 1%, uh, but the year before, 1347450 was the medium sold price for a home in Park City. Uh, down to now $1,336,250. You know, we're talking about million dollar properties, that's nothing. Uh, Snyderville Basin uh, rose 20%, how about that? Uh, 720,000 climbed to 866,250. By the way, this is the accurate figure, that data from our earlier thing saying 485, I think it was. Yeah, they, got those uh, they just kind of missed it by almost half. These are the accurate figures for that same area. And if we look at the condo median sold prices in Park City, up 5%, 521000 to 549000 And in Snyderville Basin, up a huge 13%, 339500 to $385,000. And now we're looking at lots um, up one up 0. 0.17, <laughs> so level, it rose by 1000 uh, 599,000 in the city limits climbed to 600,000. So that's level, pretty level in Snyderville Basin. 325,000 rose by uh, about 2,250 to 327,250. So our, our values are staying steady on the lots. Again, kind of a shortage of inventory right now. Uh, now we're going to shift to a, a, a new segue and a new section in our uh, monthly webinars called Lightning Fast, uh, fla I can't even say it, <laughs> Lightning Flash Facts. These are fast facts that we're gonna shoot at you in 30 seconds <clears throat> or less, uh, kind of fun. We'll go back and forth between Doug and myself, primarily on geographical areas, starting with homes and then hitting condos. And uh, if, you know, listen for your neighborhood or your property, and uh, you're gonna be pretty impressed by, uh, by what we see here. So Doug, you're on first, ready? All right, I'm ready, Set. let's go fast. Go. <laughs> Single family homes in Old Town, 64 homes sold in the past 12 months. That's 28% increase, with the median sold price being 1212500 up 14% over the prior 12 months. Old Town. Old Town. Now take a look at Park Meadows. 63 homes sold past 12 months. That's up 24%, Park Meadows, with the median sold price 1373500 That is up 6% from the 12 months prior to that. Prospector area, 17 homes over the past 12 months. That's 89%. Wow. Is that correct? 89%? Correct. My eyes are not deceiving me. <laughs> Median sold price, $700,000. That's up 8% over the past 12 months. I think we got a rising market here. I think we do. <laughs> Let's take a look at some more. Canyons, 10 homes sold in the past year. That's compared to 11 the year before, but so actually down by one. But look at the total dollar volume up 70%. Now, what's accounting for this is that almost all the sales were in the colony. That's high-end property, but up 70%. That's wow. huge. Jeremy Ranch, 45 homes in the last, to 67 the year before. That's a 33% decrease. But if you look at that the lack of inventory, that means that the median sold price increased 20% to 850000 in Jeremy Ranch. That's fantastic. Jordanelle over uh, by the reservoir, 28 homes sold in the past 12 months. That's a 40% increase. Medium sold price out in that neighborhood, $838,132, up 20% from the year before. Now let's take a look at condos. Uh, condos in Old Town, 137 condos sold compared to 175 the year before. So it's a 22% decrease, um, but the uh, median sold price is $445 thousand dollars which is up 21 percent over the prior 12 months old town you gotta love it uh, you gotta love old town prospector square now people don't think of prospector square doing this but take a look at it 60 condos sold up from 37 the year before that's 67 percent increase in activity in prospector square medium sold prices 131,500 
but up 23 percent from the previous year. Silver Springs, not a lot of condos in the general Silver Springs, but 10 condos sold in the past year compared to four the year before, so that's a 200 percent increase statistically. Median sold price $466.92, up 24 percent over the past 12 months. Huge. Jeremy Ranch, 19 condos sold in the past 12 months, that's up 58 percent, with the medium sold price now at $535,000, up 14 percent over the past 12 months. So those are our flash facts, uh, kind of nice stuff just to take neighborhood to see what's happening there. Uh, if we covered your neighborhood but you have some questions, contact us. We're happy to give you uh, details on those statistics. And if you like that information but we didn't happen to cover your particular condominium or geographical area or single family home area, give us a call. We're happy to give you that information. Uh, kind of a fun thing to yeah, do there. Neat. Yeah. All right, Doug, tell us about how Vail's spending money in Park City Resort. They are spending their $50 million and it's coming together. It's pretty cool. I've been uh, going up in the uh, hiking up on the trails and watching this happen, and it's been pretty neat. Um, the Quicksilver Gondola, that's the interconnect gondola that connects the two resorts now, making them one. All of the towers are in and standing, and you can see the picture on that upper right. If you've if you ever get the opportunity to watch those helicopters bring in those poles, it is really fantastic. They really know how to fly those. And if you watch, they can set those poles right under the bolts. It's, it's really unbelievable. Um, but that whole lift line is in, um, at least as of this last weekend. The cable was not stretched, but the power line that goes between them was all in. So it's really coming together. It was exciting to feel the energy up there, up on the mountain. Yeah, look at that view. Yeah, it was That's neat. something we haven't seen before because... You wouldn't have that, been there before. It wasn't there. Hiked up really steep Iron Canyon. So. Wow. Um, the Miners Club the, uh, a restaurant is uh, in. It's all framed in. It'll be dried in shortly. Looks just like the artist rendering, actually. Yeah, it does. <laughs> Go fancy. Um, so neat new restaurant that's going to be state-of-the-art right at the base of the Quicksilver Gondola and Silver Load Express Lift. Um, the mother load, if you're familiar with the, uh, the bottleneck that could have been the mountain, that uh, high-speed detachable six-pack, uh, the base is in, the towers are all in, and they just got to put the cable in, and it looks about ready to go. So I think they're, they're on track for a ski season. They're spending the money. They are spending the money. It's pretty impressive. It's, it's neat to watch. Yep. So we wanted to, to talk about uh, the impact that Vail's improvements are having on the Park City real estate market, but we ran out of time. And we knew that was going to happen. So next month, this is a topic that we're going to cover. What impact will Vail's improvements have on the Park City real estate market, uh, good or bad? And we'll discuss that. If you can't wait for next month, give us a call. Uh, in a moment, I'll show you our phone numbers and how to reach us. Uh, but if not, join us for next month, and we're going to focus in our attention on that topic along with some others. Uh, if you have any questions, email us. You can send Email to me at ron at thewillsteenteam.com. Or, of course, Doug at thewillsteenteam.com. If you want to call, include your phone number, preferred time, and we will give you a call. Any questions you have, any way we can help you out. Um, next webinar will be presented and complete on October 15th and posted on our website. So that's when you hear about the impact of those improvements on Park City Real Estate. With that in mind, you can always go to uh, thewillsteenteam.com forward slash webinar archives, watch past webinars, either market talks or on special topics. They're all there for your entertainment and enjoyment. With that in mind, have a wonderful time and I look forward to seeing you on the slopes here not too long. Have a great day. Thank you.